The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. When you were young, how many of you laughed at somebody else? And when you were young, you thought it would be no big deal. You're not laughing at the person. You're just, you know, kind of laughing. Think it's harmless, right? That's before you were saved, before you took Christ seriously. For the most part, people think it's harmless. I hear a lot of people say, well, they're just kids. What we know now, as giving our lives to Christ and he has opened us, opened us up to spiritual things, we see it's very damaging. More and more young children committing suicide from being made fun of or bullies. So we know it's, it's a big deal. And it can be very destructive. I'm making a point here. Before you gave your life to Christ, you thought life was one thing. Upon giving your life to Christ and undergoing a process that you're still in, your eyes have been opened to how these tiny, small things can be very damaging. Which means that justifies why we were called children of wrath. Now we know why Jesus said we were once children of wrath. I'm saying this to let you know that someone who's not who has not given their life to Christ. For real, they can say it all day, but faith without works is dead. There is a difference in a person who gives their life to Christ. They have certain convictions, certain things they can't do anymore, period. Someone who has not given their life to Christ is a vessel of darkness, period. It does not matter who they are. They're going to be used by darkness. They're going to exercise desires of flesh. And when you're looking at leaders in the world, when they give their life to Christ, there are certain things they can't do anymore. Should they have the Holy Spirit, there's just certain things they won't do anymore. They have a different desire set. I want you guys to first understand that. And before you think, I'm not going to talk about leaders because the presidents like Trump and, and Biden and Obama and Clintons and Bushes and all those guys don't matter. They're, they're people who are in government who always make plays. They've been there since the Clinton era. They're still there. They're going to be there when, when Biden is gone. And they do some of the real things in the world. And these guys have essentially made the Ukraine a staging ground. And here's what I want you to know about this. First, I want you to see past the rhetoric, past the propaganda. And there's been propaganda on both sides, but the story is all wrong. People are actually, they're, they're actually dying over there. They're building up the Ukraine with a lot of money. Wasn't it um, not too many hours ago? People are popping up, giving blank checks to the Ukraine for weaponry. The rhetoric keeps stating that Putin is running out of ammunition, this and the other. Yet the Ukraine is constantly asking for ammunitions and money and things of that nature. They have missile systems. But what you may not know is the U.S. has command and control of those missile systems. So they have near real-time video communications in the Ukraine right now. That was established a long time ago. They don't need Starling. Sorry to break that one to you. They don't need Starling. But the Ukraine is a staging ground, which is involving just about every nation in the earth because they need the participation of many. Here's what I mean. You have this conflict that has encompassed just about all nations. You have a lot of weaponry that's being set up in the Ukraine. And to be frank with you, the Ukraine does not have some of these weapons. They're over there, but they're not, they can't use them. We're using them from over here and over in other places. Many people you see are spokesmen for a well-oiled machine. It's propagandized so much because they need your participation. Now, I may go off the rails here because if you thought I was just going to talk about some of the logistical issues and some of the political issues of the Ukraine, no. They can do that somewhere else. Once you see the real story, they need you to participate. They need you, each one of you, to participate. They need you to get behind someone. I want you guys to take note that Satan can't do anything in this world, can he? If Satan can actually affect change in this world, he would have taken it over a long time ago. But you are in his way. Spiritually, we know that everything in Revelation is going to be fulfilled. We don't know all the details, but it's going to be fulfilled. We also know that the world is going to worship the beast. They're going to love the beast, but they won't call it the beast. That's not what they're going to call it. They won't just that they won't call the Antichrist the Antichrist. And that's not what they're gonna call this guy. It's not what they're gonna call him. They need the world's involvement, participation. They need the world to give over themselves to a cause and a situation. Just as our Father in heaven requires by faith for us to believe in him. So do the fallen mimic the same thing by your faith believing in them. Why do you think in this UFO phenomenon topic 
they peek around corners and just won't come out right. Why do you think they do that? Because they want people to believe in them by faith. Because here's what happens when you believe in something by faith. When you believe in something by faith, it no longer matters what evidence is presented. You become loyal to something without having been shown any evidence toward or against whatever it is. In other words, you give yourselves over to something. And when you give yourselves over to something in full support of it, you're authorizing it. Why is that important? Because God gave you dominion over the earth. He did not give the fallen angels dominion over the earth. He didn't give Satan dominion over the earth. He gave you dominion over the earth. He empowered you to subdue it. Satan usurps that power, that authorization, to make you authorize him to act as a, act as a proxy for you. If he can get you on board to support what he's doing, you're authorizing him freely of your own will to do whatever he wants in the earth, and that's how the beast rises, because you give it your authority. Even with yourself, Satan cannot overpower you. He can annoy you. He can irritate you, but he cannot overpower you, unless you give it authority, unless you give him authority over your life. He can't do anything else. If he could, you'd be dead. All those who believe in Christ would be dead. He wants you dead. He, he doesn't want you changed. He wants you dead. He wants you out of the picture because he can't convert you. So he'd want you dead. But he has no power to kill you. What he is doing is forging events in the world where you give your authority over to an ideology. He makes you believe in something so strongly that you approve everything they do. That's what they need you to do. In or around the Ukraine, doesn't matter if you support Russia, doesn't matter if you support the Ukraine, they need you to give your full authority over to them. They need your desire to be that they do what's necessary to accomplish whatever they need to accomplish, and that's you submitting your full authority to them. That's your spiritual authority, by the way. And it's happening more and more. And as it happens, you're going to notice a notable change in most things. I want you to keep that principle in mind about this war in the Ukraine. The war itself just doesn't make sense. The rhetoric is not matching up, right? It just doesn't. Putin is not losing. He's actually winning. He is. He's pushed them all the way back. They keep hollering they need more weapons and ammunition. Yes, they would boast that they're winning. And Putin only has, you know, every time I see certain certain uh, people write articles and say, well, he only has 24 hours left, Putin. They've been saying that since day one. The Ukraine is effectively taken. Do you guys know that? High Mars are outside of the effective range. And a brand new front is about to be launched. A coordinated effort is about to take place. Because many people have given their authority to a power they don't even know. Because they pulled at your heartstrings. Because by weight of evidence, you not being a direct witness, you've heard witnesses. It's kind of like that, that um, they had a couple soldiers speak from the Ukraine. Two days prior to these soldiers speaking from the Ukraine, they said they had, you know, they, they didn't have video conferencing. Because they couldn't establish the internet with those in the Ukraine yet two days later. With perfect video, had to be 4K. Two soldiers were speaking. And then they showed another on the battlefront. And it looked like 4K video. These small things you don't notice. They're putting right there in front of everybody. But it's almost like people are so caught up in the rhetoric right now. That when you start hearing about the Ukraine and Russia, all of a sudden you're emotionally compromised. And you want your favorite guy to win. Because you're believing the causes they're presenting to you. And what you think is right over there is wrong. And what you think is wrong is right. I'll tell you that now. It's not anywhere close to what they are describing it to be. As it turns out, many stories that have been given since, uh, you know, the beginning of last year have turned out to be the opposite of what most people have believed. And all you have to do sometimes is sit back and look at the truth, look at the outcome, and you'll see where everything is going. Once they get your participation, they will effectively dethrone you from getting in the way. That's what they're waiting on. This kingdom of the beast is most certainly going to rise. It's going to be brutal. And for those of you in the USA, if you think you're not going to be involved in this one, you're wrong. You're already involved. You just don't know it. They have sacrificial cities in the USA. I hope you know that. Places they agree to take the grunt of any missile barrage that anybody would send. And as far as technology goes, well, keep living. You're going to see the opposite of the rhetoric take place. And you're right in the middle of it. But if you're aware spiritually and you're not giving your authority over to whatever power it is they're trying to increase over there, because it's much like a big ceremony. It is much like a big ceremony. They always have these types of ceremonies with a sacrifice right before a great, great war. And these wars have not been 
what they have historically been based on. Satan is very good at that, by the way. Lying by telling the absolute truth, that's what Satan does. Having you to believe in it something by telling you the truth as he did in the garden he told the truth to Eve but as a consequence they lost their own divinity they were talked out of it because they believed the rhetoric of Satan which was absolute factual and he told the truth in so doing he had them believing a lie the same thing is happening now the USA won't be spared from this one that's not going to happen everybody gets involved in this one that's what I want you to know about so you're not thinking that somehow we're not going to get involved and when I say involved America hasn't been hit by any external weapons for a long time, correct? Except for 9-11. Isn't that correct? We'll be hit within and from without. Because more and more people are believing in the causes of people who are actually wielding nothing but darkness. Utilizing other folks as pawns so that you hand over your authority to them. When you hand over your authority, believing in somebody else's cause, do you understand that you're powerless? If you agree with Satan... You cannot rebuke him. I hope you know that. Satan is a legalist. He is a draconian-tongued legalist, which is why hatred is involved in politics. Have you ever wondered why people are so hateful in politics? Now you know why. If it were a godly thing, hatred would not be a part of it. But what's slowly happening is your personal will, your desires becoming their plan. Haven't you noticed that? Too many people are now saying, well, I just hope that so-and-so just you know, blows the other side up just totally to end this. It's not going to end it. It will expand it. There will be an expansion phase. You will see people talking at the UN, hammering out some things, and it's not going to go so well. I'm telling you that now. The moment when they say peace and safety, you ever wonder why when they say peace and safety will sudden destruction come upon them as a woman that travail up with child? Why? Because when they say peace and when they say peace, not us, when they say peace and safety, you know what they're saying? They're saying we have done it. We have established our way. Our plan worked. What does God always promise? He always promised that Satan will never have his complete way on the earth. And every time that Satan says, I have done it, something major happens to him. In this case, sudden destruction will come. A beast kingdom will be erected. And as soon as the beast sits in the comfort of his kingdom, with all those corrupted people, his kingdom is going to be thrust into darkness. Why? Because God will always be victorious. So anybody else who would claim to be victorious in truth, well, that just can't happen. That's when the word takes effect and kabooey is the end of that. But now you sit at a time when you got to be careful what you agree with. Because if you hand over, if you develop a desire for darkness to do what it wants to do, you have effectively uncovered yourself. You have turned back and looked upon Sodom and Gomorrah. See, for the average person who has not given their life to Christ, if they turn back to darkness, Satan will embrace them and use them. You were born with a belief in Christ in you. If you turn to darkness, Satan will destroy you and everything about you. That's what Sodom and Gomorrah was about. If somebody who was called by the living God, who indeed answers to that call, ever turns back, to darkness, they will most certainly be destroyed. Satan will not use you. Satan will absolutely obliterate you and everything about you because you truly belong to the living God. And a belief is putting you so that you would go to Christ to be kept, not lost. So if you ever turn away from that, you will be destroyed. There's no placement in darkness for you. There's no turning back for you because if in that day you do turn back, you're going to be gone. You won't be salvaged. The only thing that's kept us is God is not willing to lose us. That signifies his love upon us because we know what we have agreed to do a lot of times, don't we? We know. And it wasn't, we didn't bring ourselves back. We were called back. When whatever we were chasing fell apart, conviction stepped in. We were called back at the last moment and we saw the truth of what we were chasing. The Lord did that. We didn't do that. The Lord did. But in this case, I'm telling you right now, there are going to be many who give themselves over to the deeds of darkness in this world. And by doing so, they're going to be worshipers of darkness, worshipers of the beast, worshipers of the dragon. Just like the Lord said, the Lord said, if you love me, then obey me. Those who obey me, the Father and I will make our bow with them. That's what he said. So in that same respect, you can say whatever you want with your mouth. You will begin to do the deeds of your father. That's what Jesus said. Jesus told us humans that we will do the deeds of our Father. 
Whoever our Father is, we will do the deeds of our Father. That's why faith without works is dead, and as it turns out, we end up doing works. But what works? So ultimately, the truth of us will be wide open here shortly. And I personally believe, you know, when Paul said that, they will not come. As there come up falling away, first that man of perdition be revealed. I believe this is part of those, those people who do fall away, who are simply uncovered to be what they really are. But you had to be careful in these days. You guys have families, right? And I, I know you guys want your family protected. But let me tell you something. Jesus already addressed this. People ask all the time, how do I protect my families? Most people don't even know the nature of their own family. They don't know that yet. Your small children that you have, did you know those are actually your brothers and your sisters in Christ that you've been put in charge of in this earth? And it's a privilege that they be in your care. They too will grow. But while they're small, don't you want to protect them? And how many people have rebuked something only to find that that rebuke didn't work? It's, if, if we're honest with ourselves and we're not playing, you know, like we're Moses, if we're not playing like we're Moses and we actually admit that we're sinners saved by grace, if we stop trying to be the perfect ones, we understand that sometimes something is not going right somewhere. And there's a reason for that. The word is not flawed. What's flawed is how we approach things and our inability to be sober when we need to be. Because Putin is going to make a declaration in the next 12 hours, and it's not going to be a fake one. This declaration will not directly affect those of you in the USA, but I can't promise the same for Germany, nor the UK. Now we're getting into those NATO factions. Provocation has been set in motion. There will be reprisals. Nations are scrambling. Right now they're scrambling. You don't even know it, but they're scrambling. They're scrambling because they know that there are certain threats that will not be a block. And this will turn into something not so passive as it is now. But while there's still time, an evaluation on what side you belong to, that should be affirmed, don't you think? That means in realistic terms, somebody's going to have a surprise. Somebody's going to have a real surprise. Somebody say, cause the balloon? No, not the balloons. No, somebody's going to get hit. They're actually going to be hit. When I'm not talking about the Ukraine. Someone's going to be hit. And that's going to have real repercussions. It's not going to be some media story either. No, nope. that's going to have real repercussions. It, it amazes me that many spiritual people will not lock on to spiritual stories like Turkey. Did anybody investigate what happened to Turkey 48 hours before that earthquake? You should. You should go back and see what they were talking about 48 hours. And then ask yourself, why do you, you know, then see why they had that earthquake. What do you think that really is? See, I'm not too quick to to attribute all these disasters to mankind. I'm not going to build up mankind like that. So, oh, that was heart. Well, that was this. And I don't do that stuff because I know better. Number one, we all know the declarations the Lord made. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Two announcements will come out explaining a red spot in the sky. Now, how many of you people know about a red dot in the sky you've heard throughout history? And they said, well, when you see this red dot in the sky, how many of you have heard about that? Oh, they're going to explain it to you. Now watch them downplay it and people believe it. You just watch and see. That'd be another mistake. They're going to do this until people literally blow up. You do know that in the Ukraine, because of bio laboratories, biological and chemical weapons laboratories, that NATO is protecting things over there like you, you just wouldn't believe how they're doing it because they have a lot of research tied up in these facilities. This is not research you can transport by a hard drive. Sometimes when you make chemical biological weapons, there are samples, and those samples are vaulted all throughout the earth. They put those samples in different places, never in one place, in different places. And through the cooperation of nations, those samples are kept. You know the one in Ukraine is under threat. Hope you know that. It's going to be very difficult to contain what's in the Ukraine. See, because sometimes all this war stuff that you see is never about what they're telling you it's about. It's never about what's publicized. But all you have to do is step back and begin the process of elimination. If it's one thing man can't do, he can't stop his own pride. And through pride, he often gives his own contradictions. And if you can know, if you know what those contradictions are, you start crossing things off as to what this war is not. It's not some dispute between the Ukraine and Russia. That's not what it is. That'll come out later. There were conversations that took place right before this incursion and the whole world is setting itself to wipe russia out of the way they need russia out of the way there are nations who have pledged themselves 
to other causes you wouldn't believe. And when all of it comes out, you're, you're, when all of this does come out, chances are uh, most people are not going to care. Do you know why? They're going to have bigger things that take up their attention. And you know what's really going to consume people? Because remember, they're going to say peace and safety. They're going to say And while we have natural disasters, that will double. The water event is very close. Certain struggles are just beginning. Things will change. There's one thing that will cause everybody to lose focus on all these things that might help a person identify what's actually happening. And you know what that is? Prosperity. Imagine this. Imagine a world where volcanism is starting to take over. And that volcanism leads to many different earthquakes where we have celestial phenomena and we actually go through two meteor storms that burn up a lot on the earth. Can you imagine during that time, people not having the food they need, but by way of prosperity, they don't even care. That sounds odd, doesn't it? That means you're through money. You have your money. You're not going to have product. How many times have I said that same thing? You're going to have your money, but you won't have product. You will not have product. See, I already know the money system is very robust. It's being changed over. People will get used to it. The only way they're going to be able to keep it down the road is to become a citizen of something very new. They're going to cancel people's debt. The credit system is going to change. All this is going to happen so fast, but at the, in the, at the same time, the shelves in the stores are not going to look like they do now. They're not. Availability of products is going to suffer greatly. Internal manufacturing of every single nation is going to have to take root. That's why they, that, you know, they just spend a lot of money on manufacturing facilities in every single, every single Western nation out there. They spend a lot of money on internally to manufacture their own items. New treaties have been signed as far as trade so they can keep the Western economy going in a certain, that trade going in a certain way, kicking out other nations. Oh, they're going to do it. They're going to mess people up because people think it's going one way. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be like half and half coffee. You're going to have your money, but you won't have product. That's going to be people a false sense of security and through flatteries. They're going to say, well, we we have product. You know, we're engineering the product. For example, Ensure is engineering something right now. That's going to replace protein for just about everybody. And people are going to love it. Or oh, their contingencies are going to work. People complain a lot. Yes. But when people have to listen to me carefully, if you have power to buy food, but food availability is scarce, right? But they've supplied. You don't have an issue with electricity. You don't have an issue with paying your bills and your Internet and all this. You don't have an issue with that. You have an issue with food. You're going to do things differently. I'm telling you that that's something the world does not expect. They don't expect that. That's going to blindside a lot of people. And they're going to have people right in the palm of their hands. Because when you have the power to buy something, but you can't buy it, that's when you start taking instruction on how to acquire it. That's when they can really begin to cause the populace to go left or right. That's when they tell you where it is. And because you have the power to do it, you're going to, you're, you're trying to be the first one to get it. And you know all that's going to be engineered. How could a person like that? I'm, I'm going to ask you guys something. Now you guys know I'm a plausibility person since day one. In other words, I'll say things that sound so off the wall, right? Then I'll cover it up with some other additional things, right? But then all of a sudden, the paradigm most thought would come never comes. But the crazy guys, right? How, how can that be possible? How can that be possible? How can some of the, what, what the three stooges use, the um, uh, term they use anyway, is some of the, some of the harebrained ideas that I ever give ever come true and they're against that they don't even go with the flow with everybody else. How could that ever happen? You remember a lot of people say, well, just, you know, tell us without, just tell us straightforward. No, I'm not doing that. Because if any one person is ever correct in what they say and they keep, they, they're correct one too many times, you're just not going to hear from that person anymore. They're better put in, you know, those plausibility areas. When this unfolds, who's prepared for that? Oh, and by the way, I'm not the only one who knows. I'm certainly not the only one that knows about this. There are some people that know about this in detail, but they're counting on it for themselves. They're getting themselves in position to maximize on what's about to take place. Because I told you guys about crypto, and the system behind crypto makes it a gold mine. Not the crypto itself. It's the engineering behind how crypto works. That's the gold mine. How many people said that was going to fail? They have no idea what's about to happen in crypto. They're not going to feel too good because a lot of people did just what they wanted them to do. They leveled everything out. At any rate, I'm telling you now, though, 
don't give over your God-given authority to anybody by supporting ideologies that are not the Lord's gospel. If they're not the Lord's gospel, right? Because God has people working in these areas. But you're sent here to intercede for the darkness that would utilize it against the innocent, that would try to warp the minds of your brothers and your sisters. You're a vessel of usage. You house the word of God. You have God-given authority. Don't give it over by beginning to desire what the world does. Desire what your Lord does. Desire what Jesus desires, not what man desires. Man's desires are leading him to a pit of full and absolute corruption. And that's the part we wrestle with, isn't it? Because we think it harmless when it's in fact harmful. People are doing exactly what certain organizations need them to do or just have a desire. They're hitting people from all different directions. No matter what reality you believe in, they're campaigning for your desires. They want your authority. And what do they want that for? Because something is rising. Whether people are ready for it or not, you're in the days when something rises in this earth. And we're not talking about some movie. That's not what we're talking about. And they're not going to call this thing the beast. They're not going to call this thing the Antichrist. I could use an example for Democrats and Republicans. How the worship of men has blinded them to simple truths. But how violence has been born out of both. Violence is not born out of anything holy since Christ. Since Jesus has come to this earth, there's been no violence born of holiness. God has given no instruction for violence. None. And when he did give instruction that armies be destroyed, he gave instruction that Nephilim, third and fourth generation Nephilim, were destroyed. What do you think they lied about the Native American history here in America? What the serpent mounds really are, they lied about that too. That's why they don't allow certain pieces of certain machines around those areas. South America likewise. They know what was here. They know the influence that is here. They know it. They know how it affects the people. And of all those negative forces, of all the storms that happen in the world, where do most of them hit? The same place where we have the most prisoners of all the nations combined. Did you ever look to see where these prisons actually sit? You think that's it? You find that out? You think that's a coincidence? And it just so happens that people who are addicted to certain things, who are losing their lives left and right by way of desirous things, happen to be in those same places. You think that's coincidence? Why would that ever match up with historical places? These problem areas, why would that match up? You think that's coincidence? Darkness is real. God did not make you prone to the darkness. God sent you here to interrupt and defeat the darkness. But if you ever agree to darkness, and all of us have this as proof in our lives, when you agree with darkness, you have no defense against it. Darkness got to you when you desired to see it, when you thought it was not darkness. That's how it snuck into your life. You didn't see it as darkness. There's not one person who is addicted to drugs, who told all their friends in the second grade, I want to be a heroin addict. That's not how darkness works. It sneaks into your life. Insignificant small steps is what darkness takes until it gets a foothold. Once it gets a foothold, it will manifest into something so dark, but then at that moment you can't get rid of it. So what I'm telling you is when darkness finally manifests, it's dug in just like a tick. It only begins to manifest when you can't do anything about it. And before you say anybody can do something about darkness, then if that were the case, everybody could get off drugs right now, but we know they can't. We know they are convinced they can't do it. They're, they're convinced they can't get away from those pills, the, the needles. They're convinced of this. It's not that they can't do it. They're convinced they cannot. They're convinced it's stronger than them. So what do you think will happen when the majority of the world gives over its desire to an ideology of darkness by any means necessary? What do you think will happen? Those same people are going to have no defense on what rises of it. Do you see what's happening? Do you see why the war in the Ukraine and with Russia is so divisive? What is it actually accomplishing? Yes, people are dying over there, but what's it actually doing? It's causing people who are not even involved in it to kill each other. Do you know that? Because of the Ukraine, do you know their crime? There are large amounts of crimes attributed to this conflict in the Ukraine. People have shot other people in all lands because of the war in Ukraine. Because they say, pick a side. And if you pick the wrong side, just like politics, they'll desire to kill you. That's how Satan has people these days. People ask me all the time, what are you, a Democrat, Republican? Neither, I'm a Christian. 
I'm a believer in Christ. That's what I am. You're not going to lump me on one side or the other. I do not walk that way. I like conservatism. I have strong conservative views. But don't put me in a classification with people who have an ideology outside of Christ. That's never going to happen. And this dude, democracy, definition, I don't believe in that at all. Democracy does not work without morals. There's no trust. You can't have democracy without trust. I'm sure that somebody wrote about that right after they wrote about a prayer. They said that same thing, and I do believe it was one of the founding fathers. How about that? There's no trust. There's little integrity. You don't know who's lying. Democracy won't work in an environment like that. So I don't know what they're calling it today, but it's not what I knew. It's not what I fought for. Not the same democracy. Just like they're changing Christianity. Christianity is no longer Christ-centric. But it's like people walking around with their hands out, saying, I ought to have everything good. I deserve the best. No, you don't. You deserve death. But Christ came that we may have life and have life more abundantly. We don't deserve the best. See how they have people in denial. They're calling right wrong and wrong right. Good evil and evil good. And the truth is we need Christ. But every subject now, it seems, is becoming a, some sort of divisive subject. So Christians can get involved and tear each other to pieces. I just simply won't involve myself. You guys know that, right? I get asked every day, is the earth flat? I don't care what the earth is. They don't like my answer because I don't care what it is. I don't care if the earth is concave. I don't care. That will not benefit nor destroy anything in me. It is what God made it to be. But I hope you see what's happening. And I hope you understand this war in the Ukraine is meant to involve everybody. And it will spread. Don't become compromised by what comes next. Never stand up and say, see, I was right. Because if you're right one week, you're going to be wrong the next week concerning that Ukrainian crisis. Time for us to believe in our father more than the news again. The propaganda machines are going, they're going full force. And if we're not careful, we're going to find ourselves in full agreement with an ideology that we don't know the origins of. Giving over our desire and our authority to something bound in this earth called darkness. And if we do that, we're defenseless. These days are days of sobriety. Do your best to be sober. Satan is trying to turn you into your own troubles so that you can't see anything else beyond your own troubles. He wants you to suck, uh, shut yourself into your own crisis and shut everybody else out. When this happens, when your heart, your mind is locked into your own circumstances, that just so happens to be the same time you can't tolerate talking to anybody else. That's when you pluck people out of your life because you just don't have time for them. That's also when you're not thinking about Christ. But people become desperate, start thinking about everything. And that's not being sober. Remember your circumstance because you believe in Christ, your circumstance is purposed. Satan can't do anything he wants to concerning you. He can't do that. He only works within the area God gives him to work in your life. And if God allows him to get even close to you, even for a second, you better believe it's highly purposed. God doesn't do anything like man does for fun. He already knows what you're capable of. The problem is we don't know what we're capable of. He knows what you can do. We don't know what we can do. So your circumstance is designed just for you. And it's important that you find out what that is from the Messiah. The self-help books didn't work too well, did they? All that other stuff didn't work either. But if you find out find out with the Lord, is it what he's telling you in your circumstances? Because he's growing you in your circumstances. You find that out. Here comes deliverance. Once you hear him, there's no need to continue to go through that same circumstance again. That's when you're fully delivered because that circumstance has worked or it has been purposed to work. It's working something. Everything the Lord is doing in our lives is part of this process we're in. And this process is for our complete deliverance. He's not going to halfway deliver us. You're not going to barely make it in. That's not what's going to happen. You're, you're either a child of the kingdom or not. You're either a joint heir or not. There's no halfway man. That's like if it took, if it took uh, uh, you know, seven people seven days to dig seven holes, how long will it take one man to dig half a hole? The correct answer is you cannot dig half a hole. It's a hole or it's not. Do you see the point? You belong to the Lord or you don't. There's no in-between, barely. There's no measurement of that. But you're in the days of compromise also. This is a war. This is a spiritual war. And there's no such thing as an innocent bystander. In a spiritual war, the only casualties are those who chose not to engage. This is about being hot or cold, not lukewarm. No such thing as lukewarm. There's no such thing as a fence. People on the fence about Christ have decided no 
So in truth, they're not on the fence. They've already chose against him because they keep saying no until they say yes, don't they? So there is no fence. If you say to a person, oh, I missed you, but in truth you did not, that's hypocrisy. And the world teaches us how to be these actors and actresses. That's something we're going to have to choose to bury. We're taught to embrace somebody falsely. We're taught to shake somebody's hand and say, ah, it's good to see you, but you didn't even think about them before you saw them. And when you leave them, you won't think about them again. That's hypocrisy. And the Lord does not want us to be hypocrites, but sincere through and through. This is something all of us have to work on every single day. And that all this begins with understanding that God is ever present in your life and that you have no secrets from the Most High. That brings you into a moment of sobriety. That brings you into a moment where you say, okay, Lord, here I am. And that makes us honest in our servitude, not hypocrites. And that will cause Satan to lose big time. You know what God's perfection is? How is God going to perfect you and perfect me and perfect the next guy? How is he going to do this? Last thing. You want me to tell you how he's going to perfect you? God's perfection is not somebody who is perfectly proportioned. That's not what that is. It's not somebody lit up to a certain brilliance. That's not what it is. Let me explain God's perfection. If I get a banana off a tree and part of the peeling is brown, that's still a perfect, that's a perfect fruit because it's a banana. If I get another banana off the tree and it's a banana on one side and an orange on the other side, that's imperfect. That's not perfect. Why? It's not what it was intended to be. God didn't talk about the condition of something. God talked about something being what it was intended to be. Perfect fruit is that yielding fruit of holiness. So to be perfect is to be what you're intended to be. And in the Bible, it says you're predestined. So for God to perfect us is to cause us to become what he intended us to be. Correct? Which, by the way, is everything your heart truly desires. Imperfect is something like a hybrid, like some of the bread we eat now with that hybrid wheat that they approved at the beginning of the year. The hybrid popcorn, the hybrid chemicals, the hybrid stuff they stick on pills now that you swallow that has some kind of tracer in it. The hybrid sodas. Coca-Cola did it. Did you notice the formula change? Most of the coffee makers did it, except Maxwell House. And when they do it, I'm done with them too. Hybridized in, in, in my term is modified. It's been genetically altered to last longer. Well, the only problem with that is anything that lasts longer in the harsh conditions is harder for the body to break down and utilize all components of it. It's important that something rots faster than normal. You know why? Because your body can actually break it down and utilize everything in it. If something won't break down correctly, your body can't break it down either. It's going to have a hard time processing it. Then people wonder why they feel strange these days. They don't have that get up and go that they used to have. And you better believe they need people to agree with what they're doing. They always do. They need you to get on board. When you're, when you see people on board, when they start standing behind what they're doing in the Ukraine and Russia, when you see too many people standing behind it, giving over their authority, their personal authority, that's when it escalates big time. That's when nobody mistakes this for a conflict and they'll say, nope, this is war and everybody's involved. That's when the big things happen. Only when the populace is involved. They initialized it, just like 9-11. 9-11 was something that was initialized. Then ultimately people got behind it, didn't they? After people got behind it, that's when things begin to happen. Same thing is happening here. They will continue to elicit your sympathy one way or another. And it seems like it's working because many people are starting to agree with one side. Doesn't matter what side you agree with because many are giving over their own personal God-given authority, their own dominion to what's happening over there. That somebody else, whoever's pulling the strings, that they just flatten the other guy and that's what they're looking for. That's when they act. Didn't you notice that from 9-11 when people say, go kill who's responsible? That's when things started to happen. Pearl Harbor, same thing. That's when things started to happen. The Vietnam War, same thing. That's when things started to happen. The Korean War, same. Th it's the same thing every single time. Nothing ever happens when people say, oh yes, somebody should do something. No, something always takes place when people say, you go kill the other guy and they start standing behind it. That's when things actually escalate beyond control. That's when many people begin to perish. It's just sad that these stories end up being nothing. And people find out post-war what the war was all about. Never before. Somebody said false flag. Well, I don't do that term false flag, and I'll tell you why. 
in the ter- in terms of false flag, everything is a false flag. But when there's real death involved, there's a cost, right? To me, it doesn't matter if it's a false flag or not. Doesn't matter how it begins. It'll consume lives. And I'm not Satan's cheerleader. So I'm no cheerleader for death. That's not what I do. So then when it comes to uh, uh, people designating why it started, that becomes highly irrelevant. In that respect, all things have been false flags, haven't they? All things have started under false pretenses. COVID-19, governmental structures, certain campaigns, false pretenses. Keep that in mind.